So it would appear there's a major happening within the video gaming industry. Uh, you have Epic Game Store suing both Apple and Gulag for banning them off the site. And this is quite interesting, you know, because my private company can do whatever it wants. Ma -ma -ma -ma. But every single journalist and publication from California nya, 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 uh, that I see is siding with Epic Game Store now. Fascinating. Like, so many people, so many gamers get the platform from uh, these places and they never once sided with the little guy. The moment a corporation gets bullied, oh, my private company goes away. They're clapping like seals. I, I find it very interesting, muy interesante, that all of these journalists from allegedly competing publications have the literally exact same opinions about every single subject. Isn't that fascinating? Like, why, why do you even have competition? Why do you even have multiple journalistic outlets? Because at this point, you read one, you read them all. So let's talk a little bit about um, this because uh, I, I think it's interesting. Let's give a little bit of context. Now, both Apple and both Gulag, you know, call them monopolies, call them what you will, but it's uh, pretty much 97% of the market. Last time I read, that, that's how much they're having. Um, if you have something, like you have an app and you get banned from these two places, your app is going to die. There, there's just no way no way you can make it so <clears throat> that's that's I guess like the argument that they're going to go with now here's the thing when you decide to put an app or whatever on either Gulag or on the Apple store uh, they take I believe 30% of your sales which sounds reasonable right I mean they they do provide the service they pretty much like they doing publicity for you or whatever it's fine whatever. 30% and in the case of Fortnite they have loot boxes they got like other transactions that um, they use and they created a third-party payment processor so that if you buy these things in game the money doesn't go to Gulag and it doesn't go to um, Apple so that's why they got banned, right? Now, in a huge display of hypocrisy, I guess they made this propaganda reel, I guess. That's that's the only way you can call it. Uh, which alludes to 1984. And it, it shows how Apple is, um, you know, brainwashing people and is, is like this evil entity uh, and Fortnite is coming there like everything is in black and white but like this Fortnite video game character comes in there and you know breaks the screen of Apple and uh, I guess releases the people that are trapped under Apple's mind control and this is why the journalists are clapping you know and I'm thinking like are these motherfuckers for real like not one of them pointed out that Tencent which is a Chinese company. And when we talk about Chinese company, it's not like talking about an American company. Chinese companies have to obey the Chinese government. It's a dictatorship, okay? Like the Chinese government controls the Chinese companies. They have to do what the government tells them. In America, it's not like that. In America, Twitter doesn't have to do what Donald Trump tells them, just, just so you can make that comparison. But anyway, right? So Tencent, a Chinese company, has stocks in Epic Game Store. A lot of stocks um, and you want to talk about 1984 like do you know what China does to gamers just, just pointing it out there like if you want to play a video game in China like in some cases they do facial recognition but in the overwhelming majority of cases you have to use your real name like Steam is making uh, a client for the Chinese uh, people and a part of it is to make sure that everyone uses their real name. You're not allowed to use nicknames when you play video games in China. Um, you lose social credit score if you play more than a couple of hours a day. Like you are being, you are being so tracked that I don't even think Arwell considered the existence of this technology when he wrote his book. 
I mean, they, they use everything they can in order to track gamers and control gamers. They get to decide what games are acceptable in China and which one aren't. Um, if you want to release a game in China, you need to censor it according to their preferences. Like, you're not allowed to have magic. I mean, and no, actually, you can have magic, but you're not allowed to uh, have resurrection in it. No blood, no guts, no skeletons, you know, no necromancy, that type of thing. Like, you, you need to make sure that your video gaming girls don't have nudity. And a lot of Western companies are changing and, and I think they're pushing this idea of wokeness and feminism just to, to hide the fact that they're actually censoring for China. They're not censoring for the Western market per se. It's a lot more easy to just make one drawing rather than make like two versions of the same game, one for China and one for the West. Um, but like, you, you know, and I don't care if you want to side with Epic on this. I personally probably side with Epic on this just because if they win the lawsuit, uh, there's going to be certain clauses that might um, make these two companies, Apple and Google, less powerful. I don't like big, powerful companies. You know, I, I, I just don't. I think oppression, because I, I used to be a leftist, you know, but back when the left was fighting against actual oppression, and oppression doesn't come from the white man. <laughs> oppression can come from anything. It usually comes from religion, corporations, and government. These three things are the entities, the big entities that constantly bully the little guy. And I don't care about skin colors or anything. Like, I think opp oppression is not a good thing, regardless where it's coming from, right? So, um, if if Epic Game Store manages to, I don't know, win the lawsuit, which would be surprising, to be honest. But if they manage to win the lawsuit, it's uh, it's going to be like a step in the right direction. The less power companies have, the better, in my opinion, you know. Uh, but I, I'm not going to say that they're like these moral arbiters that they, they manage to, um, you know, be the good guys in this situation like they, they don't have a leg to stand on when it comes from morality if you want to judge whether or not they offer a good service that's a different conversation but from a moral point of view i don't care you know like um kind of interesting though you know like uh, there's a coincidence right now right after donald trump goes after um TikTok, you have chinese companies going after apple and google mm. you know Oh, and not to mention, like, Apple is the one that uh, first started complaining about TikTok. Really? You're going to drive your motorcycle now? Apple is the ones that started complaining about TikTok. They're the ones that um, uh, pointed out that uh, it's stealing personal data. So there might be a little bit of that. Uh, I do disagree with Arch Warhammer, you know, because uh, Fortnite did propaganda for children. I don't think children are playing Fortnite anymore. I think those kids grew up, they're teenagers now. Um, and the reason you would want to get teenagers on your side in a thing like this is because they have a lot of free time. They got like non-stop time. You know, like adults have to go to work, they have a job, they don't have time to do internet activism. Uh, teenagers have a lot of time to just make memes and, you know, push a message. And This is why the left co-opted the furry fandom. because. Every single time you're going to see on Twitter, cancel culture happening and someone uh, trying to get someone else fired. Without any exception, you're going to see a furry there. And um, yeah, they, that's just how you want to do it if you want to win. You got to get people that have no lives and spend their entire time in the basement with a computer to do activism for you. So it kind of makes sense what Fortnite did. I'm not going to judge them for it. Uh, there, there's a lot of other people that do this. I mean, AOC did the same, you know, like she did it on TikTok. Like there's a lot of kids on TikTok and she asked them to um, register, like to to reserve places for a Trump speech so that actual people can't, um, can't attend anymore because there would be like too many reservations and you would want to buy a ticket and they would say we're all sold out. But in reality, uh, most of the people that did the reservations wouldn't show. So it's not like, you know, doing activism to target young people is something new or something that should shock me. The left does it all the fucking time, you know. It's like, fine if you do it once. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I live by the world we live in, not the world I want to create. 
Yeah. When I live in the world I want to create, I'll have different morals and standards. Until then, I'm just playing by the rules that are set. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the comment section.